December 24th. You ever been to a Christmas party that gets out of hand because of a little too much booze? Well, in 1826, there was the mother of all Christmas parties gone wrong. See you at Christmas. This is day one of the time ghost of Christmas past. I'm Indy Nidell. Okay. It's Christmas Eve, 1826, at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, New York, and several young cadets plan a little Christmas party. Now, consuming alcohol is prohibited at the academy, so they are to make do with non-alcoholic eggnog. Okay, but eggnog, made with milk, eggs, and cream, a winter tradition, needs brandy, bourbon, or some other whiskey to be the real deal, and more in line with what barely 20-year-old cadets consider fun, right? It's only a little bit of booze anyhow, and it's a few military men in their prime, so what could go wrong? Well, we know almost exactly what went wrong from the ensuing court cases, in which 167 people testified. So, three cadets, one of them named Samuel Roberts, take a boat to town December 22nd. The young men bring back a total of two gallons of whiskey and a gallon of rum. That's roughly 11 liters of hard liquor. Other preparations, like, like smuggling small portions of food from the mess hall to their quarters, proceed apace. On December 24th, word spreads of a party in the North Barracks, and around 10 p.m., a few dozen cadets gather to enjoy the snacks and the copious amounts of spiked eggnog. At 2 a.m., a commotion is heard from room number five, and the cadet on duty goes to inquire. Eight singing cadets are told to pipe down, but they are allowed to continue their singing. Then at 3 a.m., Captain Ethan Allen Hitchcock, a lecturer on military tactics, hears noise from room 28 and goes there to find six absolutely wasted cadets. Furiously, he orders them back to their quarters. But the cadets are not quite so respectful of authority by this point. As soon as Hitchcock leaves the room, Cadet William Murdoch convinces the others to play a prank on him. They sneak over to his quarters, they knock on his door, and they run away and hide before the answers. Then they repeat this. Then they repeat this again. But the third time, Hitchcock has had it and goes again through the North Barracks, joined now by Lieutenant William Thornton. They are soon confronted by dozens of drunk, rowdy cadets. When Thornton orders several of them to be arrested, Cadet Roberts punches him in the face, knocking him out. With alcoholic courage, the cadets are now in a riotous mood. Furniture, windows, and doors are broken, an inquiry lists $4,000 worth of damage. Cadets that were not part of the party now try to organize a force to restore order, but the drunk cadets think that it's regular soldiers, so they barricade the barracks. At this point, Hitchcock is assaulted and even fired upon. At 6.05 a.m., Christmas morning, when Reveille sounds, a third of the cadets are still rioting, and regular soldiers from the 2nd Artillery now have been called to restore order at gunpoint. In the chaos, some of the drunk cadets simply show up to roll call, barely able to stand. Others are arrested, and some just continue partying out of sight. In any case, the eggnog riots are over. The investigation that follows finds that 70 cadets participated. 19 of them and one soldier are tried by courts martial. Many of those are expelled, but some were later granted clemency. Among them are future Confederate President Jefferson Davis, Confederate General Benjamin G. Humphreys, and U.S. Supreme Court Justice John Archibald Campbell. The guy who arguably started it all, Sam Roberts, is expelled and banned for life from serving in the U.S. Army, but will become Secretary of State for the Republic of Texas in 1841. What a party, huh? So what does your most derailed Christmas party look like? Let us know in the comments. And if you're new to us or you want to revisit the past, check out our World War II channel where we cover that conflict in real time week by week or the rest of our fabulous historical content here on Time Ghost. And with that, I wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, or whatever makes you feel that this is the season to be merry. Love to you all, and see you tomorrow for another installment of the Time Ghost of Christmas Past.